Ready to get started, I think we have an outstanding presentation. And pretty much, this is for us, and it's called, look at it as master planning. We're still planning, it's not a done deal, but we're planning. And that's why we're doing this so that we can look at including everyone in the plans. So, Sadiq. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for coming to this forum. The idea today is to uh, come back to the stakeholders and constituencies to let you uh, visualize some of the planning that you did in this room, this forum, when we had a, a discussions back in December to be able to lay out the future cause of uh, this college, of how educational master planning, the unique plans that you have done and you spent all this many months to plan and put in place, how does it interact with facilities of the future? And what is it that we can be able to afford to do in the next five years that truly address your educational master plan? And what is it that we can extrapolate and plan over a 15 year, a 10 year period such that by the year 2022, you'll be able to still meet your facility uh, objective uh, to be able to have your curriculums and planning, accessibility through the campus, and have an enviable environment that young men and women hold. Everybody will be able to have uh, a cradle of uh, educational uh, vitalization in the region. So in the process of so doing, recall that we have competition that is going on. You have so many colleges in the Bay 10. The issue there is that who is able to provide the resources, who is able to provide the environment that will be more suitable for students. If you are able to do that, and along with curriculum and all what they need, then you are the campus of choice for them. Because I recall when this building R was done, there were a couple of comments that students sent to me via email. They said, you know, one of the reasons why I'm at Mary College is because the students were recognized and they now have a space to work with within this building, and that is why they are here. So that was a comment from a student. So I'm not going to take uh, bug you down with much uh, details, but we have uh, WLC and MAS that is going to go through the process and let you know that what they have done in terms of putting your ideas together uh, for the future. And then you have opportunity to be able to ask any question that you have. The end result is that uh, we've been able to come back to the stakeholders to tell them what we are planning to do. And um, we're going to be having a board facility workshop meeting on the 17th of this month, which is next Tuesday, I believe. And the discussions only will be about the future of this uh, program. Once that is done and the board uh, reviews what we are discussing and what we're going to discuss, then on the 24th of this month, we will go to the board and ask the board to formally accept the work that has been done for us by the consultants. That is what is going to go into the books. So you're going to have three sets of books. One is the educational master planning. Then there's going to be another book that deals with the funding on how the educational master plan interacts with the data and the funding for this project, and then the facility master plan. That information will be stored in your libraries, and it's also going to be available uh, in the campus for future use. So yes. As you go through this plan, yes. if we notice that something is not there, yes. is there still time for them to be advocacy to get something sort of changed? And I'm, I'm specifically thinking about the self-aligned house, yes. which has been much misaligned for many years and has never really had a voice or an advocate. Yes. And when I look through this, you know, that you guys did, yes. um, it's not mentioned anywhere. Okay. So I just would like to figure out whether or not that is something that we think is going to be viable to have students there, or should we just not consider it? Because right now it's sort of an eyesore. Okay. So I'd rather either say, it's not going to be on the plan, let's dump it, or let's really look at it as something that we can refurbish. Okay, that is a very good question. 
there is two ways to look at it. It's not too late to be able to have a program like that incorporated in the information. That is why we're having this dialogue and discussions. But however, the priorities of your educational master planning need to take precedent over everything else. In other words, the timing by which the work will be done could be very. We're going to look at the first five years and then the remaining 10 years, what could be done. So it's not too late. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to call on uh, WLC uh, to begin. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sidi. Um, my name is Leo Ray Lynch. I'm project director with WLC Architects for our master plan component of the project here. We're doing master planning for all the campuses in the district, as well as the, as well as the district administrative offices. Um, and so, uh, and this is kind of, kind of like, I don't tell everybody this, but this is my favorite because I live about right up the street, right around the corner here. So this is my favorite campus, and my son played soccer here, my clear soccer club on a regular basis on the fields. So I'm used to coming in and out of here all the time. So, but with that said, um, what we're going to do here today, and I'll go right into the, uh, the agenda, uh, we're uh, going to give us a brief intro, which Sadiq provided and uh, Dr. Adams. Uh, we're going to review the educational master plan data. Uh, part of our team is Moss Companies, and, and Dan is representing Moss Companies. He'll introduce himself. And Moss Companies is an educational planner, and they'll talk about how they looked at the educational plans that you provided, as well as the, the environmental scans provided by Chuck McIntyre, the district, the district strategic plan, and all, the, all of that information regarding the educational component of, of, the, of our master plan. And they, and they did the number crunching and did the analysis for that, which then which they gave us the jumping off point to begin with our actual facilities master plan data. Uh, we'll talk about the town hall, which I think I see very much a lot of familiar faces from the town hall meeting uh, that we're here as part of the town hall process. Uh, the planning components that we did, and then the fact, uh, finally, the master plan concepts that we've come up with as part and parcel of this process. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the phasing, which Sadiq alluded to earlier. Uh, so, with that, um, the, the key components of this process is that this is an integrated process. You, you hear that word a lot, but I think it's important um, when you look at how all this comes together. Uh, the Board of Trustees, the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor last year are leading the charge. They're our direct clients, that's who we're working for. However, in order to get our work done, all of, all of the folks you see here, the college presidents, the faculty, the staff, the students, uh, the, the communities around all the campuses, all the public agencies that we have to get involved with in terms of that bring, bring things to the campus, the local business communities, neighborhoods, of course, the, the M&O department, uh, as well as the facilities department, which Sadiq is in charge of, and then all the educational committees, the educational master plans, which are done by each of the campuses. All that stuff has to get synthesized and put together to come up with the final master plan. Uh, and so they, there's many different spokes in this wheel, but all of it gets, gets the wheel rolling so we can move on down, as they say, move on down the road as part of this process. Uh, and with that, what I'm going to do is bring Dan up, and he's going to talk the first part of it with the edu about the educational master plan. Thank you. Um, as we all know, uh, you at, here at Merritt College created an educational master plan. And that was really, like Leo said, our jumping off point, our, our foundation for all the work that we did. Um, we started our process back in October. This is a little bit of the timeline that we went through and, and where we are now. And as Leo mentioned, we go into the board uh, next week and then the week after to uh, accept the uh, final reports. We can't, I can't stress enough how important the integrated approach is. Um, this chart just shows that the educational master plans created by Merritt College and the other colleges were the beginning of our work. We also looked at the McIntyre report, some of you may have seen, which looked at the um, an external and internal environmental scans, um, the strategic planning documents, the unit plans. All of those materials fed into what we were doing. We created a document that's really a bridging document. It bridges from your educational master plan to the facilities master plan. The facilities master plan has the pretty pictures. It's fun to look at. Our stuff is, um, I think, very important. Uh, however, it, it involves a lot of data, a lot of numbers. Um, ultimately, then, WLC uh, will show you the facilities master plan. I think this philosophy 